think I found some. <laughs> now, yes, Summer, we're going to pick a uh, sweet potato. Sweet potatoes. And Mom is going to help us, and Ruthie is, and Isaac, and Emma. And And, and that's all we're going to do. And throw them inside and do all that work. <laughs> help Nadal, help Hummy, help Ding, help, help Emma. And do what? <laughs> Rita Deep Farm here on this very blustery day. Uh, we are digging sweet potatoes. It is October 19th today. So it's pretty late in the season. Usually we've had a frost by this time. We're in zone 5B here in Kansas. And it's very windy out, so you'll have to forgive my wild hair. But today we're digging sweet potatoes and I wanted to show you our harvest and give you a few tips about growing and harvesting sweet potatoes. So take a look. All right, so I've already dug up probably, oh, four or five plants. And this is what I've got so far. Now, they're not all too whoopy. This one's a pretty good size potato. Um, we have already dug up a few, well, we dug up one or two plants the other day when we filmed that footage with the kids and there was a really big one <laughs> so I hope it wasn't just a fluke I hope we find some more big ones but um, we've been already eating on these uh, I love feeding them to my baby she's 10 months old and she's just loving these sweet potatoes so I just wanted to show those of you who have never really done sweet potatoes um, you might be wondering well how do you dig them up so I just want to show you kind of closer what I got going here. So it can seem kind of tricky to find um, like where to stick your potato fork, right? Because these vines are just all over the place. Um, I planted in a block, um, just like a square block, and I planted my plants probably like six or so inches apart. But what you do is you just grab your vine and you're going to just try to find where your vine starts going straight down in. So if you can see here, this is where the vine comes down and just goes straight down into the ground. And you can see obviously here we can actually see a sweet potato. So we know this is where the potatoes are growing right here. So I don't want to stick my fork right into there because we're going to damage the sweet potatoes if we do that, which I have done already. Um, sometimes you hit one and that's all right. Just eat that one first because it's not going to store. But anyways, the, the vines will sprawl out and they will put down roots elsewhere. So there's not going to be potatoes like over here where these are growing, um, growing roots down over here. You want to find the main plant where you where you planted that uh, potato slip in the first place. So let's um, let's dig this up and you can take a closer look at that. So I'm going to put my my fork kind of back a ways 
and then I'm just gonna push it down in and I'm gonna lift up gently and loosen those potatoes up and just push them up out of the soil and then a lot of times you can just pull this plant up and the potatoes will come with it but if not just grab them out and these ones they they've grown really long and kind of interesting um, not so fat but super long love it and then go in there and you'll want to just dig around a little bit make sure you didn't miss any Hopefully this dead cat's working and you're not picking up a bunch of wind on the audio. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I like to plant my sweet potatoes. Typically people plant potatoes in a big mound. So they will hoe up a big hill mound of dirt, maybe a long row, um, and they'll plant their potato, sweet potato slips along that mound. I have done that in the past and I have found some issues with that method. And so I have switched to no hills, just flat earth, um, and I plant in a block. It doesn't really matter how big your block is, but a block seems to work better for several reasons. Uh, the first thing is when you go to water it, when you water on a mound, on a hill of dirt, the water tends to just roll off of the hill and erode the soil with it and then I'm left with exposed roots and dry plants. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it is so low maintenance. Once these leaves, once these vines canopy and they grow really fast, um, so they'll grow up, they'll canopy and they'll shade out all the weeds. I probably weeded this patch one time. Um, and it's the only place in the garden that isn't covered in weeds. Um, and it's just because of the sweet potato and the way the vines grow really fast and canopy and shade out all the competition. So watering and watering works better and weed suppression works better. Um, and then also, so you're wondering, well, the whole point of the mound is to have that loose soil so the potato can get nice and big, right? And I understand that. So I don't have a broad fork. I would recommend you use a broad fork to loosen the soil before you plant your slips, but I have a potato fork and so I use a potato fork and I will just uh, stick my fork in the soil to prepare for planting and loosen that soil up. Um, and then I plant my potato slips in that. And so that's how I prepare my little block for my sweet potato slips and it has worked pretty good for me. Um, like I say, you can see the fruits of the harvest for yourself, uh, the vegetables. And let's dig up the rest of these potatoes now.
guys so we got a radio flyers worth of sweet potatoes and I'm happy with that we didn't have very many slips this year to start with so hopefully next year we will get even more right Ruthie Bell what you think Ruthie can you show me sweet potato show me a sweet potato sweet potato show me one can you pick one up and show me So, we cheated a little bit. We threw in a couple butternut squash, but that's all right. Those taste good too, huh? What'd you find? Orange sweet pepper? My favorite tomato this year was the Dr. Wikes, which he was in the other garden. I also really like these. They're so beautiful. And I'm not sure what they are. I think they're called delicious. Either that or they are a cross. But look at that. It's just beautiful. Beautiful big tomato. Perfect. Pick it. Harvest it. Show the people the pretty tomato. Get some too, Rufy. <laughs> All right. Where's the pink ox hearts? And they're over on here. This is the pink ox hearts. I don't know. This one's not quite. Oh, he's pretty good. I really like these too. Here, can you show mommy? Show him the pink ox heart. Isn't that pretty? Look at mommy. Cheese. <laughs> Good job. You want me to carry that? You got it? Alright. Got a white tom tomasol or those were the free seed from Baker Creek. They're yummy. Emma's our tomato eater. Alright. See you. go get hazel basil. Hey basil. You ready to go in? You ready to go in? You want to show them your double dutch cosmos? Alright. These are a double dutch cosmo. Ain't they pretty? So we, we ordered some David Austin roses this year and the kids helped me plant them. You probably can't see them very well yet but there's two here and one here. Oh, and there's one here. These are climbing roses. So I'm dreaming of a big pergola <laughs> here in between, and I've got climbing roses on each end um, of Dave and Austin roses. And the climbing ones are called the Generous Gardener. And then there's a Princess Anne here, the Generous Gardener on each end of the future pergola. Right, Daddy? <laughs> and then we've got, this one is three, these three are uh, Olivia Rose Austin. So they'll bush out and be like one big bush since I planted them kind of in a triangle. I'll show you where the cows are. <laughs> okay, so we got some cows now, new development. Not those ones over there, those are grandpas. Uh, there's a big bull over there. Uh, those are grandpa's cows across the road. You can see the ones with horns there. There's a jersey. Pretty girl. Yeah, the bull.
Let's go follow Emma and check on the milk cows. Emma, do you want to tell us who they are? So these cows don't actually belong to us. We don't own them. They are my brother-in-law's. He is so generous to let us milk the one. And we have been enjoying the raw milk. Uh, we just got a milk bucket in the mail, actually. Okay, so here, here they are. That, that red cow with the pink collar on, mm. not that black cow, the red cow, is named Flo, and she's the cow that we milk. And that black cow is Sally, and she's not the one we milk, but we only milk that other cow. And th that little cow with the white face is named Chase. So here's how we fixed the tie rod this morning. Come over here, let's take a look. The tie rod yoke was actually a 5 8 fine thread. So I went to the hardware store and bought a $8 axle U-bolt. And come down here, and this was snapped off because somebody turned it. This got bent right here, the stop for the tongue. So then when that got bent, somebody yanked this too far and it snapped this end off. So I had to, I re-welded this piece onto there because the thread was correct size and it had the locking bolt. And so for less than $10, I have a free trailer basically. I should dedicate a whole entire garden to sweet potatoes because they're like one of the easiest things to grow in the garden. So nutritious. So delicious. I like to start all my babies out on sweet potatoes because they're so good. Everyone loves them and they're so healthy and seriously they're like so easy to grow. Everything else you're battling weeds, you're battling pests, neither of those going on with the sweet potatoes. So I really encourage you if you are in a place where you can grow sweet potatoes give them a try and if you're buying sweet potato slips like starters I don't know what they call them um, if you're buying them, don't do that. You find yourself a good sweet potato to start with. I was fortunate enough, um, my husband's grandma and grandpa grew sweet potatoes every single year. Decades and decades ago, they bought a sweet potato at the farmer's market and they used that sweet potato to grow slips. All you do, um, there's probably a million videos on YouTube, you put your sweet potato in a jar with some water in it and it'll grow roots and it'll start growing leaves out the top of the sweet potato. You cut those off, stick those in a jar of water and they will root and those are your sweet potato slips and they're, it's so easy to do. It's really fun for my kids. Anyhow, we, so we got good genetics from his grandma. We got one of her sweet potatoes last year and we started our own slips and that's what we planted here. So look that up. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to a how to on that. Um, try to find a good one for you. But um, a good place, if you don't have anyone near you, you don't know anybody you can get slips from, um, Seed Savers Exchange. You can go on there. I'll leave another link to that below. Um, it's a wonderful place to get heirloom seed, but you can also get um, things like sweet potato slips um, and other uh, garlics, you know, stuff that you can't buy in a little seed packet. So check them out and 
and I'm gonna finish this job up and I hope you enjoyed digging up these potatoes with us and we will see you in the next video.